Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'll take a look at how to use the Avada image carousel element. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all new content. Okay, let's begin. The image carousel element allows you to add multiple images into a carousel with loads of different viewing options. With Avada 7.12, it got a huge overhaul, so make sure you update to access all the new features. Let's take a look. I've imported the food pre-built here, and I'm going to add an image carousel to this about page. I've added a container with 100% interior content width, a background color, and a title, and so I'm ready to add my image carousel element. I'll start here on the children tab, as I can use the bulk add option here to bulk upload the images I want to display in the carousel. You can of course also just add them one at a time by editing the existing item, and then either cloning and editing that, or using the Add Image button, which just adds another empty item below. In my case, I'll just click on Bulk Add, and I will just control click to select the images I want from the media library. Yeah, that should do. I'll just insert them. Okay, so the images load as separate items in the Children tab, and we can now start to customize the carousel. Let's just go to the General tab for that. As you can see, there is also a Bulk Image Upload option here as well. Layout is the next option. Standard is the default, and this looks good as is, but there are a lot of ways to configure this element. With Avada 7.12 and up, there are also four other layouts to choose from. There's Marquee, Coverflow, Cards, and Slider. We'll have a look at each one, but first let's look at the next few options. Order By comes next, and here you can choose from Descending, Ascending, or Random. Just note that this option won't update in the Live Builder. Picture size is the next option, as the description notes, with fixed, width and height will be fixed, and with auto, the width and height will adjust to the image. Fixed is useful if you have images with different aspect ratios, as it keeps them all the same height. But here, all my images have the same aspect ratio, and auto allows them to grow into the space. The size of the images will also depend on the number of columns you have set in the element, and your site width as well. As I have set this container to 100% interior content width, there's more room for the images to grow. Okay, the next option is hover type, and you can choose from the usual zoom in, zoom out, or lift up. You can't use a hover type in conjunction with any of the caption types, except above and below, so also consider whether you want captions on your images. I'm going to, so I will leave the hover type on none. Transition speed is the next option, and controls the duration of the transition between slides. This is in milliseconds and can be anywhere from 50 to 10,000. The default is 500, which is half a second. Let's just set the transition speed to something a lot larger, like 5000 milliseconds, and now come back and change the layout to Marquee. Okay, the images immediately begin to scroll across the screen, and a new option appears, Marquee Direction. I'll leave this on left, and I might also change the Maximum Columns option to 3. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Obviously with all these layouts, there are many choices to control how they look. And now, let's move to the Coverflow layout. Okay, as you can see, what this layout does is rotate the angle of all images other than the center one. Now there are a whole lot of options that will further influence how this looks, so play around. For example, there are now two new options called Slide Rotation Angle and Slide Depth. With Slide Rotation Angle, the default is 50 degrees, but this can be anywhere from 0, which looks like this, and 180 which makes the rotated image appear in reverse, although you can't really see that here. They also then rotate as you scroll. Slide Depth, as the description explains, is where you set the Z-axis translation offset of the slides in the Coverflow layout. This can be anywhere from 0 to 250, and 100 is the default. If I set the slide rotation angle to 0, we can best see the effect. As the slide depth is on 100, we can see the images have depth through the Z-axis and if I reduce it to zero, they don't. In this case, I think I will leave the slide depth on zero and set the slide rotation angle back to 50 degrees. Under this is the transition speed option again. For this layout, I might set this to 1000. Next is an autoplay option, and if we turn this on, we also get an autoplay speed option. Currently, this is set to 2500 milliseconds, but I might speed that up a bit to 2000. A related option under this is autoplay pause on hover, which is pretty self-explanatory. Okay, with this effect, one thing I would change is the way it's scrolling. 
So a bit further down is the scroll slides option, which controls how many images the carousel will scroll. If you leave it empty, it scrolls the number of visible items, showing a new set of images each time. In this case, I think I'll set it to one, so it just scrolls one image at a time. Okay, let's move on. Column alignment is the next option, and here you can adjust the column alignment within rows. This option won't have any effect here, but if you have images of different ratios, you can adjust the alignment of them with this option. But personally, I think carousels really work best if the images are all the same ratio. The next option is maximum columns, and here I think three looks good. The more columns you have, obviously the smaller the images will be. You can set this from one to six, including half column increments. And just note, as the description explains, when using the cover flow layout, the total number of columns will also depend on other settings and available space. Column spacing is the next option. The default here is 13, but I think I will just increase this a bit to 20. Okay, we've looked at scroll slides, so let's go further. And here is another interesting option. This one is called center active slide. This is going to work slightly differently depending on the number of columns you have set. As I have three columns, the active slide is centered anyway. But if I change the number of columns to four, you can see there are now two center slides. But if I then set this center active slide to yes, we again get the centered slide. Again, just play around and you'll see what it does in different situations. But here I think the three columns looks better. Mask edges follows this and allows you to add a fade out effect on the edges of the carousel. Just note that navigation arrows will not be displayed if masked edges are active. Under this is an option called display shadow. With this you can choose to show a shadow on the individual slides on cover flow layout or during transitions. Here I think I will leave this off. Under this is an option called show navigation. And depending on your choices here, there are a lot of other dependent options. You can turn navigation off entirely, have arrows, dots, or both arrows and dots. By default, it's on arrows. And as such, under this are options to control the dimensions and size of the arrows, the icons used, the position of the arrows, and their border radius and color. Likewise, if you select dots, you get a bunch of options to control the position, spacing, margin, and styling of the dots. For my example, I think I will just stick to arrows. Now I've set autoplay to yes here, so you could argue I don't even need navigation, but you can always leave it on as well. But there's also another way to navigate entirely. If I turn autoplay off for a second, and also set show navigation to no, if we look at the description here, it lets us know that we can set a CSS ID field for this element, and then use that CSS ID with the previous and next links to set up navigation in buttons instead. So if I set a CSS ID here, let's say carousel-nav, and then I'll just add a column I've saved in the library with two buttons. If I edit the buttons, you can see that the link is hashtag carousel-nav-prev and hashtag carousel-nav-next. This allocates the navigation to the buttons, and we can move forward or back at will. So with regards to navigation on image carousels, there are a lot of options. Okay, for this example though, I will just step back in the history states to where I was. Okay, back to the options, and we are now up to mouse scroll. And for this example, I'll leave this on none. You can also set it to drag, wheel and drag, and wheel. Just remember that as the description explains, for easy dragability, when mouse scroll is activated, links will be disabled. If you choose an option other than none, you then get another option called free mode, which you can enable for dragging and scrolling the images by arbitrary amounts. Border is the next option, and for this example, I think I will leave this on. Image light box is the next option, and the default here is no. Under this, there is a margin option for the element as a whole, and finally is the element visibility option, which allows you to control the visibility of the element on various screen sizes, and the CSS class and CSS ID options for further customization with CSS. Okay, let's now come back and look at the other layouts. The last two layouts are single image layouts, so I will edit the container again and set the container interior content back to site width. And then I will come back to the element in the design tab and choose cards, which of course looks like a deck of cards. This layout will work best if the images are the same size. Wildly different images with this layout would not work very well. As you can see, as the autoplay kicks in, the images shuffle around like a deck of cards. The last layout is called slider. And as the autoplay kicks in, you can see the images now fade into each other, which is the default slide transition style. 
The other transitions are flip, flip vertically, swipe, swipe vertically, slide, and slide vertically. Clearly there are loads of ways to configure this element with these new layouts. To finish my example, I'm going to set this back to cover flow and set the interior content of the container back to 100%. And now I'm going to edit the element again and head to the last tab on this element, the caption tab, to incorporate some captions into this example. Here I think I will choose Navin. Now the default image overlay color is color five, but here I think I will set this to color seven. With captions, you have full typography sets for both titles and captions, so you can tweak these any way you want. The defaults are working pretty well here, so for this example, I will just leave them as they are. I might just go back to the General tab and scroll down and turn Lightbox to Yes for this final example. Now, as you can see, when I mouse over one of the images, the carousel pauses and you can see both a title and a caption. I have set these on the images in the media library but if you want, you can set them or override them by going to the Children tab and then into the individual items. Here there is an image title option and an image caption option. For more info on captions, make sure you watch our video on how to use captions on image-based Avada elements, link below. Okay, that's pretty much configured how I want it. But before I view this on the front end, let's just look at the other options on the individual slides. Under the image caption option, we can see we also have a link option. Here you can add a URL for the image to link to. If the Lightbox option is enabled, you can also use this to open a different image in the Lightbox. Obviously if you add a URL, the Lightbox won't work for that image. There is also a Link Target option and an Image Alt Text field. Back in the Children tab, I could also rearrange the order of the images here by dragging the images around, but I'm happy with the order they have. Okay, let's save this page and head to the front end and scroll down to see our carousel. Okay, there it is. And if we wait, it starts auto playing. I can mouse over one to see the caption and I can click on it to view it in the light box. Okay, that's the image carousel element. It's a flexible, incredibly versatile element for displaying a parade of images on your site. Try it out. Okay, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.